Being on black here, folks, and we're pretty much close to an all-time nearest distance from orbit center on the sun. Uh, pay attention, it's 0.9832898 AIU, and it currently we are at 985. Okay, so we're getting close to that 983 Earth distance from the sun. Okay, that's current. And our German scientist down in Neymar, we thank you very much again for photos and check this out. We step forward and where's your headlights on your anomaly in space? Because bam, just watch the clock. It's just 10 minutes the difference and check out the almost laser action that goes across the sky. Check that streak out right here. You can see what I'm talking about right there. And I go back and forth on it and bam and bam and we'll go to the other footage here in a second and I'm just stepping through this so you can see this stuff real good here real fast you should be able to pull us up on full screen and be able to realize that Beano never plays with the pictures folks never play with the pictures with you okay so that should be I don't think there's really much and I, and I can just hit start and it'll play real fast and that's going backwards and then it should reload and pop ahead. And you'll see real fast the same thing I just showed you on some stills. And I'll pop to the other location. And as you see, the scientists come out, check in, I get in and take ready to do whatever, their shift or whatever. Everything's pretty much set up for distance checking. Even their power cords coming out there to themselves has got, you know, distances. And then and we'll show you is because if you check my last video out, you'll see the vehicles were parked a different direction. And we will see the different direction that they have them narrowed down to get a little bit more precise from satellite data tracking to the distances that they park the vehicles and containers. And they do a real good job of trying to make sure that they got them parked there all the time so they can get some kind of computation of size on this thing. And we also see in the last video the size of it is not that large. And we know that it's not the sun because it hides behind the tower and comes back into effect. I.e. check the size, uh, I mean the, di the direction that this comes in. I, like I say, the vehicles get parked narrowly head first now. Uh, if you pay attention to the temperatures, it's not going to be like, I'm from the Midwest. It's not because they all of a sudden had to plug in to their block heaters. Uh, it's the idea that they keep on looking at distance and getting that with satellite data and stuff like that. As you will watch, you will see it, and I'm going to back up right now. I'm going to blow this up a little bit. We'll go up to like 150 real fast. Now there is the beginning of the, the same anomaly that you see that when we, went, when we were at the British site. Then it disappears. Okay, now we're going to get it to come up on the window, I believe, of this vehicle. And there is the silhouette of the red dwarf, brown dwarf, whatever you want to call it. Get silhouetted. And as you'll see, and I'll go to the footage of yesterday's photos also in a second, and you will see that the idea that it goes by in a different direction and also shows up lower and in front of the station compared to yesterday's. Now let me go back real fast that so you see that come up in the back of that vehicle and you'll actually even see of where I've zoomed into a thousand percent before that the idea that the object when it first shows up on the back of the window of the vehicle, here we go, there it is, you can see the split that there is a gap in between it probably proving even more that the idea and if you watch my last video just before this video you will watch in there yeah it was about rads and cpm but in the middle i give you an update down there and it'll show you i'll take you to the photos and it'll basically show you the same thing i'm going to show you again real fast and that was basically there at palau let's let it play so you realize i'm not playing with you there the red, red brown dwarf star comes across lower in the front and we'll go to the photos real fast and see where it showed up yesterday So anyway, there they go, lining up straight away instead of the lengthwise that they did the other day. You don't just do it for nothing. They're doing it for distances. Okay, because the idea that it was easier for them to be showing up like they did yesterday, I guess more people can show up at one time. I guess it must be really interesting right now. Maybe that's something to be, you know, figure out why the guys are doing it there. And if not, hey, guys down there, give us, uh, if you see, if anybody just lets you see this 
YouTube action here that we show what you got going on them down there. Give me a heads up. Let me know what's up. Give me, tell me what you can tell me. All right, go to the photos. And here we go. You can see the time in the lower right, right over here, and we will show you current sky constellation chart. And the idea that this may start being a notation of our object. Since it's not disclosed, it's black, and it's not disclosed as a constellation. Thank you very much. Okay, so I'm starting to believe that that could be our object that they're watching. As you see the tail and connects to what? I think they're trying to figure it out. Okay, Venus is what we should see on Soho. Let's go to that real fast. Go to today's 2.11.12.6. Two thousand and eleven, okay, and you will see what I'm talking about because if you pay attention to it at two hundred percent, you will see a light pattern when they show you the blue because you see all the light that comes out from the solar flaring, correct? Watch for this circle that you can see right there, and then remember that this is upside down, and I'll show you the navy shot because they like to look at black and white to see light. This shows you light when it when they put this shade on, and you will see a circular pattern here, and that's what made me first start looking, and then decide to go ahead and look at the navy, which I got navy blown up right now at, and they will show you Venus up here where it's supposed to be, and the blockers, and the word that more than likely that's Venus. Now there is all kinds of triangulation action. What we've already showed you before, we got here going on here, here circular patterns, and basically. That ends up corresponding with the, I believe, the pattern of, let's go back to the blue shot real fast where I got the tape flowing, and the idea that, yes, yeah, so if you flip that around and you have Venus up over here, then this ends up being on the right-hand corner, and you, you will look at the right-hand side of the Navy shot and the idea that it ends up being this right here. So this is part of the giant whatever the heck, and more than likely something in the supergiants, okay, because this shot is from behind the sun. Okay, so this action right here gives us this light pattern on SOHO of this object right there. Whatever that is up there, and that's humongous because you just realize how big the sun is. So this could be one of the closest ones back, and I'll end up researching on the supergiants, and then maybe the next video of seeing where we got going on in the supergiants, what's close to the sun. We know that Rigel Cantaris B is out in front of the sun, and Lasco 3 should be a shot but the idea that it's you just have to pay attention and see where lasco 3 was at today and i ain't got time for that so there this is where venus is what's in the shot when you see your soho shots so that's venus up there okay then we have that triangulation flopping action there and that situation there and also this action stuff up here and here and also tonight, if you pay attention and watch, you should see Jupiter very good close to the moon tonight. Okay? So don't be freaking out when you see the moon. It's Jupiter. Okay? This shot is from behind the sign today. Lasco 3. All right. Here's your current, current pole shift today. Time in the corner. And that's basically Antarctica there on the bottom shot. That that's what's flopping around a lot all the time. Sorry about the, but I'm not going to take time to re. I don't take too much time to record these. I'm going to go back through real fast. And the, basically, the idea that there was also a video today that a guy found from the first to the second that showed a big flare. And let's just go down and show the pole position on the bottom. There's your grid on pole position on the bottom. Okay, go to a video real fast here. Now, basically, folks, Sinister, uh, somewhat, uh, we have just basically friended, I think. That's, I, we don't think we've really communicated at all. But he found this here video, and like he, and you can go to his site and, and go to this movie online on YouTube. So it's the idea, you know, we're never feeding you any crap. It's just the idea that what we see. Now, I'm not sure I haven't taken time to see if that is Mercury and Uranus. Okay, the alignment. So you checked out on Worldwide Telescope and see, but the idea, I do believe it's not Sinister that's showing you that this is this and that's that. This is a solar blast, whether it's from the supergiants or the sun, because they're showing you right there that that's your Uranus. Okay, Uranus, that should be under our back door, not towards supergiants and so forth and so on. So where's that solar blast coming from? 
okay? Uh, I could be totally wrong on this, but everybody can go check because the idea that this was uh, taken off the Navy stuff and he's seen this, Sinister ended up pulling this off of uh, right there, off H1 1A 2011-12-1-9-01, okay? So and as you've seen that action, and you'll see again now, I think I just hit play again. So let me tape some tape. So I think i got to move the cursor here to get that going, and here we should be playing. And the idea that you can go search this footage out. So very awesome stuff out there in space, and we want to thank Sinister for finding this. And you should be able to look it up on the Navy stuff and, and get this. Uh, giving you a blown up shot. I think this should show up better. Because when I blow, it's nice to have people toss stuff back and forth. Because he, he blows it up to the right. And like he's mentioned, they think it's a spaceship. I, I do not believe in spaceships. I, there's basically, this is material in space that's so doggone humongous. And the idea that there is either gas in space and research that uh, the stuff that the NASA has on the idea of a flame burning in space, ladies and gentlemen. A flame will burn longer in space than anywhere else. And that's his arrow on there. I can't do anything about that, but I thank him for blowing that up for us because then I can blow it up more. So it's nice for everybody to toss videos back and forth, and he's got standard YouTube licensing on this, i.e., you know, we're all sharing what the, the government... Uh, our military has for shots out there in space so you end up seeing that massive object because the idea that realize that that is a material of space out there that gets I mean a flame comes along and then a gas state or whatever is out there so a new element to mercury that we found because basically no matter what you say if it's correct that's mercury that's out there because bam there comes I mean the flame and the solar ends up being just like an x-ray out there I mean it's dark and then the lights come on and something's there and it's exactly what he's got blown up there so some kind of uh, whatever because see the idea that that let me stop if I can stop Sinister thanks for blowing it up and as we hit play here we will basically be able to see that the idea that there may be a small planet or one of the moons of Mercury that gets blasted because check that out. That is matter there. That's not burning. Okay. And then that flame gets shot at it and we get that image and then you see that it basically is becomes all flames. Okay. So the idea that what do we have there, you know, so, uh, whatever's around that small moon or planet that's next to Mercury that's in the dark that you don't see, and then it gets flamed, and then you get to see that. So very interesting stuff that we're getting out there, ladies and gentlemen, very interesting stuff. So once again, this ends up being this light source here, the lighter area on that SOHO. So back up the tape and, and get that. And there was Venus down there this afternoon on the sun. So that's your object in Natural direction of the Earth, and there's the latest earthquakes, folks. Ring of Fire, North Pacific Coast, up in Alaska. So I'll drag it and then put it in normal motion, and there's normal motion, and this is recent. Hit right now, and fresh. That's it, up in Alaska, 3.3 .3 up there. 3.3 quake up there. 2.6 on the coast today, so far, and back it up a little bit and there's the other action that's been going on so it's light source because it basically nice to stay in the same areas and it's way more than just the sun it's the super giants and the stars it's everything because look at all that okay and that's like a week right there okay for the footage of the pictures from yesterday I'll click through them really fast and the idea you'll see that it does basically right here there is a sign that there is something in front of the object that's in front of that and the idea that will show that it's not the sun because it will disappear behind the tower it's smaller is it nemesis nemesis is pretty far darn away darn far away but see it disappears bam gone and then it'll reappear on the other side of the tower so it, it 
and like I previously mentioned, they're parked differently that day. Legal disclosure.